Hi, good morning. It's Friday, and um, we're going to be in the, the last part of Isaiah 21 today. How are you all? Um, this is a prophecy concerning Duma and a prophecy concerning Arabia. And then we'll be done with chapter 21. So I'm going to um, flip the camera and we're going to read together there's probably only about six verses left if that okay here we go um lord bless the reading of your word right now give us open hearts here is a prophecy about duma someone keeps calling me from the land of edom saying watchman how much longer is the night Watchman, how much longer is the night? The watchman answers. Morning comes, but a dark night endures. If you want to ask again, then come back and ask. A prophecy against Arabia. You caravans from Dedan, you will camp among the thickets in the desert land of Arabia. People of Tima, come and bring water to the thirsty and bread for the fugitives. For they've fled from the battle, from the drawn swords, from the bent bows, and from the weight of warfare. This is what the Sovereign God said to me. Within exactly one year, all the splendor of Kedar will end. There's one more verse here. And all the weapons left of Kedar's warriors will be few, for the Lord Yahweh, the God of Israel, has spoken. And then we'll be in chapter 22 starting tomorrow. But, um, yeah, I just, uh, it's interesting that he's talking about watchmen, because when we were praying yesterday, we were, I think we were praying for watchmen, people who stand guard for us through the night. Shh, Pepper. Hi, honey. Say hello. Say, I want attention. <laughs> okay, lay down, honey. Lay down. Um, have you ever had uh, a dark night? As it says there in verse 12, I've had dark nights. Last night I didn't sleep well, and it was um, just, when I did sleep, it wasn't very, it was kind of fitful, but it was because my daughter woke up. And I thought it was time to go to school. It was only 3 a.m., and then it was hard to go back to sleep. But um, the verse promises there that morning comes. Morning will come, but a dark night endures. If you want to ask again, then come back and ask. I believe that um, this person asking... Um, how much longer is the night? How much longer is the night? It's kind of like how you can feel in times like the, what we're living in right now where we're waiting for breakthrough and we're waiting for the Holy Spirit to come and reign and rule. And um, He reigns and rules as we give Him place in our heart individually. But we just we're, I feel like this is the earnest cry of so many people right now. How much longer is the night, Lord? How much longer? And he's saying, morning comes, church. Morning comes, my people. Morning will come, but a dark night endures for right now. So, I don't know, there's a saying that comes to mind that it's darkest um, night before uh, morning dawns. And um, maybe we're right at that place where... It feels like the darkest night when we when we think, especially with the recent abortion ruling in New York, we think, how much darker can it get, Lord? How much darker we're grieved. We see the state of our nation, and we, we grieve. And he's saying, morning comes. Morning comes, and dark night will endure, but morning comes. And I just feel like he's saying, repent. Repent while the darkness is here. Use your time. Use this dark place to make a habit of repenting. 
and he's promising us that morning will come. Um, yeah, I just, the picture down below here in the prophecy uh, concerning Arabia. Hi, Lisa. I see you there. Hello. Um, this this prophecy against Arabia here, um, where it says they have fled from the battle with the drawn swords, from the drawn swords, from the bent bows, and from the weight of warfare. So these are the people of Tirna. Um, they're thirsty. They need food. They're, they're weary from the warfare. Um, and the Lord says that within exactly one year, all the splendor of Kedar will end. So, um, yeah, I just want to declare today that those who are battle-worn, that those who have fled just for a drink, those of you who are feeling, um, I speak to my own soul even, and those of you who are feeling battle-worn, who are seeing uh, that life has had, you've faced drawn bows, and you have uh, faced, um, I'm sorry, bent bows, and you've, you've faced drawn swords, and you can hear the fighting on the field of the swords clashing, and you just need a respite. Just, I just feel the Lord calling you into a respite, and he's saying, come over here, I have food and water for you. And I just, I just pray the Lord's covering over you. I pray that he will shelter you and hold on to you physically and give you a quiet place with him where the, war, the warfare will cease. And Lord, we just declare that morning comes with you, that, that the battle will cease and that you will be uh, there, standing right there for us with what we need, the water for our thirst, the living water. Lord, we just come and take a drink right now, and we come battle-worn, those of us who, who have had our swords drawn for so long. Lord, we just ask that those that we know whose arms are weary would be able to come over to you and find a place to hide. We hide ourselves in you until you give us the food that we need to go out and to fight again. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you today. The Lord feed you, give you warmth, give you, give you a cool drink. And uh, we'll be in chapter 22 tomorrow. All right, bye-bye.